Star's Philadelphia Filmmaker Lab is a year a year long fellowship that will support four projects by Black, Brown, and Indigenous filmmakers through making equipment, space, crew, mentorship, funding, and critical feedback available over the course of a 12-month program. Black Star will act as an executive producer on the short films created during the lab and premiere the films at the Black Star Film Festival in 2023. The program is open to emerging and mid-career filmmakers seeking to create short narrative, experimental, or hybrid projects in any genre. The application for the 2023 Philadelphia Filmmaker Lab can be accessed via the Black Star website, blackstarfest.org, from September 7th to September 29th, 2022. Our in-studio guest tonight is Zenia Matthews, who was one of the inaugural fellows in Black Star's Philadelphia Filmmaker Lab. Interviewing her is Philly Cam's own community news producer, Bettina Escariza. Bettina? Thank you so much, Connie. Hi, everyone. I am Bettina Escariza, Philly Cam's community news producer, and joining me is Zenia Matthews. Xenia is an innovative film and visual artist who creates highly saturated hybrid films that stimulate the senses. Her work focuses on her personal experiences of Black womanhood, the joys, the struggles, the misunderstood, externalizing what is often only experienced internally. Her previous film, A Few Things I'm Beginning to Understand, just completed its festival run screening at Indie Memphis, Slamdance, the National Film Festival for Talented Youth, and many others. It is currently streaming on Metrograph's website. Xenia has just completed a new short, sci-fi and surreal Eureka, which premiered at the 2022 Black Star Film Festival as part of their inaugural Philadelphia Filmmaker Lab. In the future, Xenia seeks to install her films using physical space to enha enhance the immersive experience. Thank you so much for joining us, Xenia. It's my pleasure. All right. So I wanted to begin, I wanted to hear a little bit about your experience with the Black Star Film Festival, but mostly to lead up to learning about Eureka, the film, right? So I guess it's not so much about the lab, but the process, that year-long process that got, that, that ended up in the culmination of this film. Right. So my friend Shatara, she sent me the information about it and she was like, apply. Don't think about if you're gonna get it or not, just like apply. And I started like developing this idea like that I had had from school because I graduated last year, 2021. And I started developing this idea that I had from school specifically for this application and it sort of made me think about all the things that I had um, that had just been like swimming around in my brain for however long. Um, and yeah, I didn't submit like any type of script to the um, to the application. I submitted, I think, a really, really good lookbook that like made them feel like, oh, she knows what she's doing. <laughs> But it it was a great time. It was honestly probably one of the best like film labs slash assistance programs probably in the country. So what what is uh, what is Eureka about? What was this idea that was percolating in your mind? So Eureka is sort of this science fiction, speculative fiction, reanimation story think like Frankenstein, like bringing something back to life about this girl that I um, discovered via a painting in an art history class. And her story was just like so sad, so unique, like a little bit weird. And there was also that like she died very young, like 16 years old of mysterious causes, which couldn't have been that mysterious. Um, and I just like wanted to see what her journey, like from this space of death, like a purgatory space, um, from a space of death 
back to a space of life and like who would facilitate that and like all those types of things so that's where like my scientist my scientist characters came from like I wanted to see like if she re-entered into a space of love and care like who would be like um who uh would she come back to who would facilitate that sort of birth slash rebirth yeah, it's a uh, it's a really powerful story. I was at the premiere. Uh, it was a nearly sold out event. Yes, it uh, was. <laughs> and it was, yeah, it was it was really wonderful. I I found it interesting this thing that you're describing about it seems like the 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 kernel, the seed, the beginning of this idea that there's a lot of pain in there, and that you found that that your uh, your instinct was to turn that into into life, into rebirth, into opportunity, right? Um, and that that's that's really powerful. That's a very powerful thing about the art that you're making. Um, so we're actually moving really fast with the time here, and I want to talk about some other pieces. So maybe let's um, let's let's go to this this uh, the previous film that you made. A few things I'm beginning to understand. Um, so this film is Surf the Glittering Channels of Xenia's Mind in this highly saturated musical spectacular where she and an old friend, Pearl, begin making sense of the issues between Xenia and her boyfriend, Kiki. Talk to me a little bit about this project. So this was my senior thesis. I made it um, sort of, I started it like summer 2020 um, when we couldn't uh, go out and film like we usually do so we were encouraged to like make stories that were close to us and um, I was living with my boyfriend at the time and I had noticed sort of this like schism like happening between us maybe we were like around each other a little bit too much I don't know but I sort of like delve into like what made us strong as a unit but also like what was sort of like chipping away at us as two people in a relationship. And I sort of wanted to explore the effect of like anti-blackness, like me experience anti-blackness, me experiencing anti-blackness as a feminine person and him as a masculine person and what that looks like and how that affects both of us and separately, but also together. So it's a lot of stuff. It's sort of like this experimental, like hybrid form film with a lot of different visuals and segments. Yeah, it, it, it seems like you really thrive within experimental forms, right? That you're finding shape in that. Yeah. Um, that you're, 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 you're carving something out of this, uh, I don't want to call it an abyss, but this swirl maybe, right? It's like- a, it's Yeah, like a, a cloud. It, yes, yeah. <laughs> definitely. Um, so how, how do you find the subject matter for your art? I'm curious if you have a, maybe a particular ritual that, that or a, a particular process that you engage in? So I always start conceptually before anything. I like, think of concepts and or themes that I want to like deal with within my work and the visuals come after that and like the story is like the very last thing to come like I never I never start story first like I'm always thinking conceptually and visually sometimes at the same time but if it's not at the same time then it's concepts before visuals and I that's like the way I think like but before I was a filmmaker, I was like an illustrator drawing, drawing and painting and stuff like that. So I, I just think, I don't know, conceptually, and the concepts that I want to explore are usually like very personal to my life, because those are the things that I know. And yeah. Yeah. The, the work feels like universal and intimate at the same time. It does really feel like I'm I'm looking into your mind, um, which is it's amazing. It's really, it's interesting in that way. Um, talk to me a little bit about this notion of art versus content and then the commodifi commodification of art, especially in relationship to filmmaking. What are your thoughts around that? 
So I feel like film itself is a very like industrialized medium, which always has me like kind of conflicted, like what am I doing for money and what am I doing for myself? And I typically like to keep my practice separate from anything that I get paid for. It's just like um, something in my head that I use to ground myself. Like, why am I making art? If there was no paycheck at the end, would I still be making this? And just things like that, just to keep my work um, personal and authentic. And I don't know, so just sort of like untainted of the whole like um, mass production of like with social media and now like streaming services, just there's so much happening all the time. And I just want to like mentally separate myself from that. So um, just so that I can take my time because <laughs> taking your time is not very um, like a, like it's looked down upon. Like we want to keep producing things like faster, faster, faster. So I want to take my time. I want everything to marinate. I want everything to be like good at the end. So I just try to separate those things. Excellent, Xenia. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's been wonderful to talk about your work and I'm really looking forward to the installations that are coming. Thank you so much. Thank you.